What's up guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with SPY and Tesla in the overall market. I'm going to talk about Apple's event very, very briefly, and then talk about what's going on with the technicals moving forward. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 in total. Not to mention 8.1% APY on uninvested cash. Anyways, let's talk about the market. So, so far, SPY has got a nice little pump to start us off. And then we ended up dipping back down from 546 all the way back down to the 544 area, testing the 50 EMA. But the question is, are we about to see a big rejection, a big dump? Are we about to see a big pump? This depends on many different factors I wanted to talk about. And I want to break down the next big catalyst from the market. So Apple has this very, very important product launch event. So they're going to be giving us more updates about what's happening with their new iPhone, uh, their uh, AirPod 4s. Not to mention uh, any updates when it comes to like the Apple Watch and other products just like that. So it's going to be coming out at 10 o'clock a.m. Pacific time. That's about two hours from now or 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's two hours from the time I'm recording this video. This big event is going to be taking place. OK, so be prepared for some high volatility once this event starts. But the question is, what's going to happen? So. As far as SPY goes, we're just range bound right now. We did pump quite a bit, but we're still stuck within the range from the pre-market session. So if we were to hypothetically lose to 543, this 543 area, I think that we are at risk of seeing a bigger dump in SPY. So make sure you watch 543 as a key area. And then if we end up breaking past 545.5, this entire range right here, I could be looking for an attempt to get back up to about 547. If we could try to hold above at least 545. Otherwise, I think we're just going to be range bound for now. And then once, you know, the Apple's uh, event ends up starting, we'll see what the move is going to be. Typically, typically Apple does sell off during events like these. So that might cause a sell off in the markets. We will have to wait and see just to be safe. But I just want to say that that is what oftentimes happens. So there is a risk of a tipping lower, especially as we have this big gap below on SPY. So I do think the odds do favor that downside move. But we have to watch for confirmation to see if we lose our key support, just to see if that ends up being the case. So watch and see if we end up losing at least 543. That would be a very, very big confirmation of a bigger dump. So watch that very carefully. For NVIDIA, NVIDIA kind of pushed a little bit all the way up to about uh, just under 107. Then it dumped back down to 104. If we lose 104, I could see this be dipping all the way down to like the 102s, if not the very low 100s. And we managed to break past 108, we're looking for 110. Now, as you guys could see, NVIDIA has a range, very, very important range. We've been stuck in for quite some time. So we'll be watching to see what the reaction is once Apple launches its products. And we see a big move in Apple. Uh, NVIDIA is just range bound, so it may maintain this. But there is still a risk of downsides. We have this gap to fill. We haven't fully filled the gap yet. So we'll see how it goes. Bitcoin pumped and dumped. We pumped all the way up to about just under 56,000. I was targeting 56,000. We came just short of that. And now we're looking at basically resistance at about 55,000. And our main support is currently at this low here at 54,600. So we're kind of stuck within this range. We could dip a little bit more, but we'll see how things go. But overall, we're doing a good job at holding up on Bitcoin. I see a risk of this dipping to the mid 54,000 area. So we'll see how things end up going. For other factors out there, we have um, ES. ES is looking a little bit weaker. I called out 5480 as one potential target. Lo and behold, that's where we went to, and we got a perfect rejection off that so far. Now, ES is trying to get bought back up off its key EMAs. We have 5450 as our support. It may shuffle a bit for now. I think it's going to shuffle for a little bit, but then if Apple causes a dump, watch support at 5450. 47. If we lose that, this could start dumping even lower. So I'll be watching that very carefully. So far, it's holding up nicely, but I just want to say that there is a risk of that downside move looking at the technicals. As far as uh, Tesla goes, we have this resistance around this uh, 220 area that was very, very key, and also at 217. Our main support's at 215. If 215 fails us on Tesla, I think it could be dumping closer to this um, yellow trend line right here, taking us to the low two tens and if we end up breaking past that area we're basically looking at this 217 area with this big rejection forming here i think there's a good chance we could come down to fill this gap so i think tesla might tip a little bit especially looking at the 30 minutes time frame but there's no confirmation yet of this dump so we'll just have we'll just have to wait and see how it goes 
Uh, but I, I presume we're going to be coming down here very soon. I think that's the most likely case. So we'll see how things end up going from here. So just want to give you guys a warning for Tesla that it might tip a little bit. Uh, we're seeing NQ kind of dipping. Same thing with the QQQ looking kind of weak. So let's go over NQ first. We pushed up to my resistance over here. I had this marked already at 18,700. And then it rejected off that. Make sure you look at 18,600 as resistance. This is where our zone is. And then our support to watch was at 18,500. If that fails us, I think we could be dipping down to some balance towards 18,475. So I see a risk of downside. For the QQQ we're rejecting right here, we have resist resistance at 451.6. Uh, if we don't break past that, we're at risk of dipping lower. And if 450 does not hold, that's going to be our next support. I see us potentially dipping down to fill this gap, taking us down to 446. Apple is dumping right now. Uh, it's starting to dip a little bit. We're actually failing to hold 218. So I'm going to be looking at 217 and 215 as potential targets. Um, so far, I'm seeing a weakness developing on the charts. So this could give bears a bigger edge. Usually, the when the event starts, that's when you see the selling off. It's starting to sell off a little bit right now. So this is what's contributing to why they're using a big shift in outflow to drag the market lower. So it's because of Apple. They're using that as a, an excuse. So that is affecting us so far. The Russell pops a little bit, but now it's starting to dip. So we're looking at resistance at this 210 area, and our main support is now at 208. If 208 fails us, we could come down to fill the gap towards 207. So be careful. We're still kind of tight on the IWM. For Coinbase, we pumped a little bit. I was talking about how it might go up to about 155 and watch to see if it rejects. Went a little bit above that's about 158 before it came back down. So overall, it's still looking a little bit more bearish. Um, I think that if we don't hold above 152, we could be dipping down to fill the gap towards 148. So be careful. For Amazon, we pushed up to about 175. I called out the 174 area, which is where we had our key resistance. We came a little bit above that, only to come back down. If Amazon loses 172.8, I think we might be coming down to fill this gap. And look at resistance at resistance at 174.5. Still has bearish potential. If Meta does not hold 503, I think we could fill this gap below. And then we have resistance at 507. Microsoft, we look a little bit more bearish here. This was a nice short. We could be dipping all the way down to fill the gap towards 400. And then Google has the same thing potentially forming. We're down to 500. So I called this move almost exactly correct about how it might hit 155, then come down to 150 again. Lo and behold, that's what happens. So we called a lot of these moves properly. Um, so far, the market's showing some weakness. But like I said before, let, let's see what happens during Apple's event. Generally, it does dump. So we'll see if we get a dump or not. And we'll just be very, very patient nonetheless. I personally don't want to hold too many positions. I took profits on a lot of trades already. Um, I'm holding just very, very tiny positions right now because I don't, I don't really like to hold too many big positions during events. Uh, it's not really my style. Uh, if you if you want to do something different, it's up to you. Of course, it's, you know you guys can do whatever you want, but I'm just talking about what my strategy has been. Uh, as far as Tesla goes, we are looking a little bit weaker. We're barely holding 215. So if that breaks, there's going to be a risk of more downside, especially as we have this big gap below to fill. All right. So I just want to give you guys a heads up. I want to thank you all so much for listening. Please have a great day. I'll see you guys in a couple of hours for another update. Let's hope for the best for Apple's product launch events. So I wish the best for Apple. and We'll see how things go. Once again, guys, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, uh, we have the event starting. That's like California time. Apple, you know, its headquarters is, uh, you know, nearby. Um, but for Pacific time, uh, that's not the same as Eastern Standard Time. It's going to be 1 p.m. for Eastern Standard Time. So if you're interested, get ready in about two hours from now and watch for some high volatility at that time. Thank you for listening, guys. Have a great day and peace out.